Jumping a bit forward to 2011, Cyanogen Mod is the go-to custom ROM for Android. The most popular custom ROM for Android. Every Android nerd, every Android enthusiast out there wants to have Cyanogen Mod on his device. Yes, by 16th of July 2011, they had half a million Cyanogen Mod users half a million Cyanogen mod users and then on 15th of August 2011 Steve aka Cyanogen added Samsung as employer on Facebook profile and the internet was a buzz I mean people were surprised shocked happy mixed emotions why they were happy for Steve but then they were also sad thinking that maybe you know Cyanogen mod is now going to die because the lead developer the founder is joining Samsung but guess what the beauty of open source is that there were a lot of people contributing to Cyanogen mod and at this point Cyanogen mod was bigger than Cyanogen and of course Steve was happy to join Samsung and here on screen is the statement which he put out in an interview to an Android blog called Android Guys. And just a small trivia, 15th August 2011 is the same day that Google bought Motorola. But then again, Steve's tenure at Samsung did not last very long. On 25th of March 2013, they left Samsung within two years of joining and of course, they did say that they left Samsung at good terms and also praised the Samsung Galaxy S4. When Steve left Samsung, Android Police interviewed them and they said that they left Samsung because they wanted to do something new and to ask them about it in a couple of months. Now do note that Steve left Samsung in March of 2013 and 18th September 2013 Cyanogen Inc was made official. The idea for Cyanogen Inc was hatched in December 2012. Yes, while Steve was working at Samsung, Kurt McMaster dropped him an email with some ideas about how they could go commercial with Cyanogen Mod and Cyanogen Inc, the idea was hatched. Now over the next few months from December 2012 to April 2013, Steve, Kurt and Kaushik Datta met a few venture capitalist firms and got investments worth $7 million from Benchmark Capital and Redpoint Ventures. For those of you who do not know who Kaushik Datta is, XTA developers knows him as Kush and he is the dude behind now dead Cyanogen Mod Recovery. Now for this new Cyanogen Inc, Kurt McMaster was the CEO and what was their goal? The goal of Cyanogen Inc was to become the third most popular operating system after iOS and Android. Yes, they were based on Android, but they still wanted to become the third most popular operating system, which in my opinion was a you know achievable good enough dream. Why? Because by 18th of September 2013, Cyanogen Mod had more than 8 million users and here on screen are the goals of Cyanogen Inc as noted by Steve themselves and of course they wanted to keep Cyanogen Inc the Android fork free and they wanted it to be the default operating system on a bunch of devices and make money by selling services and other things through their operating system and here is the Cyanogen Inc team on your screen. Now another thing they had to figure out was how do you keep open source free Cyanogen mod 
separate from the commercial Cyanogen OS entity. So what did they decide? They decided that they are going to add the letter S after the number. So let us say you have Cyanogen mod 11, right? They decided to add S and Cyanogen mod 11 S. So one without the alphabet after the number would be your open source, which is available to everybody. And then the 11 S would be the Cyanogen Inc entity or the Cyanogen OS. But, but, but that also did not, you know, work out long enough. And with say version 12 of Cyanogen mod, they changed the names. So Cyanogen mod 12 was the open source available to everybody operating system which the community loved. Cyanogen OS 12 was the entity which would work under Cyanogen Inc or a product of Cyanogen Inc for commercial use and on 23rd of September 2013 Oppo yes Oppo partnered with Cyanogen Inc and Oppo N1 would be released with both color os and cyanogen os and of course you got statements from tony chen the then ceo of oppo now of course a free open source system going commercial trying to make money there will be controversy there will be people who do not like it and that's what happened with the focal camera controversy so focal camera was a camera app open source which was used in Cyanogen mod and the developer behind it was explored wild now if Cyanogen mod wanted to use the focal camera in Cyanogen os they had to relicense it because once you go from open source to using it as a commercial product you have to relicense it but the developer behind focal camera explored wild he did not like it and why did he not like it because steve and kaushik had been trying to relicense focal camera for some time now and i guess my guess is that explored wild was blindsided they never told them the exact reason why they wanted focal camera to be relicensed and of course once explored wild came to know about the plans for cyanogen inc once it was made public he connected the dots and it was a shit storm the side effect of this was a few core super important team members left and formed what we know as OmniROM. Yep, developers like Explode Wild, Focal Camera Developer, Chainfire, Super User Developer, and Dees Troy, the lead developer of the now very famous TWRP Custom Recovery. They left Cyanogen Mod and formed OmniROM, which was announced at the big Android BBQ in. 2013 and guess what cyanogen inc was one of the sponsors of the big android bbq or barbecue of 2013 